We'll be doing follow-ups after the webinar to see if any of you need any additional support or would like additional information. Um, so we'll do that at the end. And if there aren't any questions, then we'll move and I'll hand off right over to Pascal and we'll dive into the uh, platform demo itself. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for the, the introduction. Uh, we'll present uh, at first the uh, Nubot interface, the web interface, or uh, the web dashboard, web console, whatever you call it. Uh, it's the interface that gives you access to the actual Nubot platform that is hosted on Amazon Web Service. So the interface is available from any uh, browser. You just have to go in there and, and uh, log in using uh, credentials of type username, password, or you can use social logins such as uh, Google Apps, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so forth. Once you logged in to the platform through the web interface, you can uh, really have access to uh, nice introduction videos about authentication, accounting, project and scenario, test launch and monitoring, results, analytics, and so forth, just as a refresher on what we'll uh, go through today with a bit uh, more details on each and every single uh, component of the interface. So let's first dive into uh, the accounting. Um, once you have logged in, you can access your account details from the top right corner menu. Uh, you go in there and you see organization details and so forth. Uh, it also gives you access to your actual monthly balance of minute usage and allocation for a given time period. So you can select uh, whatever time period you're interested in. So that's your way into um, view what, what are the previous allocation you had, that is the, the minute bundles you actually purchase, and uh, the actual usage you perform along the way while testing your IVR application. Um, everything starts from uh, the projects. Projects are basically container for uh, your actual test case that we call scenarios. So you can have, <clears throat> sorry, you can have as many uh, projects as you want. Uh, it's a way to organize your test uh, project uh, featuring your actual test cases. And you go in there, you can create project, you can import project uh, from previously exported project. So, um, you start from there. Let's dive into one of such uh, projects. So I go into Matt Trivia project. Matt Trivia is our uh, demo IVR application, which uh, simply asks you to provide the first six digits of Pi, upon which we can provide a correct answer or an invalid answer. On correct answer, it will give us a feedback whether it's uh, correct, and upon invalid answer, it will give us a feedback uh, saying that it's an incorrect uh, answer and will simply shut down. So that's our main IVR application that we want to test uh, today. So from the project overview, you gain access to uh, your scenarios, your configuration, and now your monitoring schedule, the results, and your minute usage for your actual project. You get also access to test activities, that is a test launch from the previous 14 days, and project activities from a perspective of editing uh, assets, such as scenario configuration and so forth. Let's dive into uh, scenario. So from the list of scenario, and that applies for many other uh, component within the interface. You can actually uh, look for a specific scenario. You can uh, sort by state count and, and so forth. You can straight from in there, you can also copy an existing scenario and clone it and start from there. So you have, you might be interested in, in creating a bunch of scenario, uh, happy path, and then uh, figuring out the negative path. So you just go in there 
you create your happy path scenario, copy uh, that scenario, and move over to your negative path. So let me open up one of such scenario. Let's just open up the OK scenario. So it provides a uh, correct answer to the actual question. So what is a scenario? Scenario is composed of a name, a set of tags. I can add in a tag in there. I can add in a description and so forth. That, that's for uh, documentation purposes. So within the d description, you can add link to external documentation, for instance, or you can just plain and simply type in a uh, description of the actual test case uh, that we have in here. And then you define your actual scenario. Scenario is composed of one or multiple states where each state is uh, trying to match a prompt coming out of the IVR. So how does it work? Uh, for a state, you define a user action within the when uh, section, and then you provide a prompt within the then section. So you, it reads out like, uh, when user press key one, two, three, then uh, system should answer with prompt X, Y, Z. So that's the main idea out of it. How does it work? We, instead of providing uh, textual recognition of the actual prompt, we are actually mapping the prompt with what we have in end. So at first, what we go is, we and we'll uh, dive into that shortly, but we create a prompt library that will be uh, uh, trying to match against pretty much like Shazam does with songs. So we're creating that library of prompts and as we go, as we execute the scenario, we are trying to match that prompt, that signal coming out of the IVR against that prompt library that we have. And we are uh, actually expecting uh, one single prompt for a uh, scenario state. So in that case, that will be the, the, the prompt asking the actual question to the five, uh, six di first digits of five. So you can play back that prompt. Uh, that prompt was previously imported in there. And from one state to another, you're basically providing user action on one end and system response on the other end. So system response being the actual prompt of your IVR application. So you can go and create uh, as many states as you want, progressing toward uh, a specific goal within your, your IVR, where one scenario accomplish one single goal. And you'll have multiple scenarios uh, accomplishing multiple goals within your IVR. So you, you reach complete uh, coverage of your IVR by creating uh, so many scenarios. Uh, so for that specific one, uh, we, uh, we start with asking, uh, matching the ask uh, first six digits of five. We move on to uh, user input being uh, providing uh, DTMF pre, uh, touch uh, phone key press. Or we could provide also uh, audio file, like uh, if we are interacting with the a speech recognition system or voice biometric system or recording system and so forth. So we can play back a previously import uh, audio file in there. We can wait uh, for some time, uh, two seconds, uh, five milliseconds and so forth. And we can uh, just hang up uh, the call right at the end of the execution of uh, that action set. So we can have as many action as we want Let's add another uh, action in there. So first action being uh, press keys, three, one, four, one, five, nine pound, and then we play back uh, that audio file. Uh, I could add uh, wait, two seconds or two minutes and so forth, I it. And that will be the sequence I'll be doing while executing the scenario upon which the IDR should respond with whatever prompt feedback that we have. In that case, uh, we are expecting an actual good prompt out of 
of this. So this is the prompt that we are uh, expecting to match. I can uh, move around my action to order those actions. I can delete those and so forth. Upon and, and so forth uh, with all other state and then uh, toward the end we simply hang up. We provide an action of type hang up and off we go. Um, going back into the project We also, what we have is we also have configurations. Configurations being uh, pretty much uh, your actual test campaign. That is uh, how you will actually execute your tests. What are the scenarios that you're interested in running? Uh, what are uh, the numbers that you're interested in running and, and so forth. So before going to uh, the configuration. Uh, let's move a bit back with uh, the what we call the assets. Uh, go into prompts. So those are uh, the libraries of prompts that you can import uh, from your IDR application. So let's say you, you're testing a banking uh, IDR application. You have that uh, large set of prompts. You go in there. Uh, click on browse and you go and import and select your uh, the prompt that you're interested in, in, in importing and the process will complete and you'll get a list uh, updated with that new set of prompts. You can play back those prompts, uh, have information about duration, uh, volume quality uh, and so forth. And you can delete those, uh, try to find some uh, specific prompt and so on. So those are the actual prompts that will be used within the scenarios to perform the actual audio pattern matching while transitioning from one state to another state. Pretty much like the prompts, we also have audios. So audios are used as input to the idea. So remember within the scenario we add uh, various kind of action in there, one of which was audio action where I could uh, specify one of such audio files. So where does those uh, audio files are coming up? They are coming from uh, that list of audio files. So I can add pretty much like the prompt. I go in there. I can actually drop in my, my audio file so it will upload onto the, the platform and make make those available as part of the scenario audio action. So back into uh, the project, I'll go into configuration. I'll open up one of such configuration. You see that I have multiple configuration. I can search for a specific configuration, typing in uh, the name or the description, for instance. I can search with a tag and so forth. Again, I can come, uh, clone those configurations. So let me open up one of such configurations. Right now, uh, configuration, uh, the information found in the configuration looks like uh, the information you have seen from the scenario where you can define the name, tag, and description, again, for uh, documentation purposes. And then you go on, what is the actual number that you will be dialing into your IVR to execute your test? So that number can be any number throughout the world will be able to reach that number. Um, obviously, that number needs to be reachable from the public network. So the test is actually going onto the public network, uh, the telephony network, so it's not uh, going over some dedicated link. It's really going out onto the wild uh, public telephony network. So you just type in the, the phone number that you're interested in reaching and then you select one or multiple scenarios. That's where you can uh, segregate your execution of scenarios. <clears throat> so you might have one configuration that is aiming at uh, testing a particular subset of your IVR or a 
VIP line or a self serve that you might have. So you, you just and you're just focusing on that. So you build that configuration and you select the scenarios that are uh, related to that very uh, test that you want to accomplish. So you can select multiple time over, same scenario, multiple scenario, and so forth. And for each and every single scenario that you select, you can actually override the DID that was specified above. So for instance, if you're uh, testing <coughs> one particular uh, cell service within your IVR, and that cell service might be able to vary depending on uh, the actual number that you're dialing in. So let's say you have a toll-free number for VIP members and one standard local number for uh, non-VIP members. So, and you want to test that out because it's part of your uh, self-serve within your IDR. So you go in there and you select your scenario and then you specify and override that DID for that very specific scenario. So 1-800-123-1234 and off you go. You have just override that DID for that specific scenario. So let's remove that. Uh, and then you can specify what we call call traffic shaping. <clears throat> where you specify the actual density that you're interested in running that test. It's, it's nice to have a test running with one single call, but what about sending thousands of calls in there uh, so they can perform load testing? So then again, you can have multiple configuration. One might be targeting low density functional slash regression testing uh, with a uh, large number of scenario and you might have other uh, test case where you want to test uh, performance onto your IVR and you will be selecting higher density but with a shorter list of scenario uh, pinpointing specific component within your IVR in that uh, test situation. And then you, have, you can specify uh, CPS that is the number of call per second that will be used while dialing into your IVR. Uh, some switches, some vendors, some carriers as uh, limitation in terms of call per second. Uh, we have seen limitation somewhere uh, across uh, the whole spectrum between somewhere between five and and 20 call per second. So whatever your limitation is, you just type in that number and that will be the rate at which Nubot will be generating calls onto your IVR. And then you can specify uh, termination condition, um, which present uh, basically uh, what will be the trigger that will terminate your actual test. So that could be a uh, certain number of total call count uh, or in last time you might be interested in running your test for two hours uh, and you can specify both uh, whatever the condition that comes first uh, will actually terminate your, your test. Throughout the interface you can see links, uh, that's the magic of web browser and web interface and so forth. So you can, whenever you see links, you can go back in there and click on that so that you have, uh, you can move into that, that resource and, and we, we can reference things within uh, the interface and you can navigate, that's one way to na navigate across the interface. So let's go back into that uh, configuration. From the configuration, then launching that test is only a matter of pressing the launch button. You can launch now, clicking on the launch button, or you can launch at a specific time. So you can specific a time uh, period. Uh, let's say let's start that test in two minutes, for instance, and apply, and that, that test will be park onto our infrastructure, you can close your browser, you can go home, you can have your coffee, whatever, that test will be launched at that specific time. Uh, let's launch that test right now. So once you launch your test, 
uh, you will be redirect into a live monitoring dashboard for that test, which is always nice while performing uh, large uh, performance testing, where you see the actual call density over time. Uh, in purple, you see the call setup over time. And then below that chart, you have information about call progress, the number of completed calls, the number of success, and so forth. Uh, at any time, you can stop your test, uh, force it, or uh, graceful stop, where graceful stop will simply stop generating new call and will wait for uh, the call to terminate. Uh, while for stop will actually shut down any ongoing call, sending any, any up to all those calls, and that test will be terminating, uh, terminated right away. So now <clears throat> we have launched that test. We got a uh, monitoring view of that uh, execution, and while it interact with your IVR, it gathers all kinds of metrics. And once that test is terminated, we are actually navigated over the uh, result page, which feature a bunch of metrics uh, across all range. And uh, you can have access to that very uh, results from the result list. You can go back to uh, the project list, your project overview, and then clicking on the result page will give us the ability to move on to the result listing where I can see status of each and every single pass uh, result, open up that very result. So that was the, uh, the result that was, uh, I just did uh, a couple of seconds ago. So from the overview page, you have access to result summary, which include actual progress status, whether it's complete, in progress, and so forth, start time, and average call duration, success rate, and, and so forth. You also have a reminder about what was the actual uh, test detail involved, where you get, again, a link to your actual test configuration that was involved for that very test. You have information about account summary, where uh, we provide information on, on actual platform usage that will be debited out of your minute bundle, and, uh, and so on. Uh, we go into scenario details. Uh, in that specific uh, case, our tests feature only two scenarios. So we see the breakdown of success rate per scenario. So we have, uh, we have scenario name, the count, success rate, and so forth. Uh, we have a nice bar chart on the right-hand side that gives you a distribution of the actual uh, scenario involved in there. And again, link will add, add, add you to uh, the actual scenario involved. Moving to call progress. Uh, call progress is uh, a pretty much uh, really, really important while doing performance testing. Uh, if you're doing large performance tests, it's always nice to see uh, your call density over time so that you can have information on whether or not you have actually reached that density. And you also have uh, call duration uh, with the breakdown on the actual call execution and uh, the call setup phase. So that is the moment at which uh, Nubot will start generating the call uh, and the moment that uh, your IVR will actually respond. So if you're doing performance tests, you might be able to see uh, oddballs in, in call setup duration, for instance. You also have the, uh, you have call failures over time. Uh, in that case, we didn't add any failures, but you will add a uh, failures count uh, line over time in there. And you also have access to uh, call generation information. That is, if you recall from the test configuration details, you add the ability to specify an actual CPS rate. So, uh, or sorry, an, ex an expected CPS rate where you provide uh, the rate at which Nubot will generate call. 
In that case, we had one CPS, that is one call per second generated, and we plot the chart uh, with the actual CPS rate, that is the rate at which we were actually connected onto the IPR. So you might see discrepancies between uh, the CPS rate that were, you were expected or your vendor claims about CPS rate and the rate at which we were actually able to generate those calls. You also have access to response time, so that is information on distribution for uh, each and every single state. In that case, we don't have any, we don't have much states, but you have the delays uh, between the moment that we send our last action, so being uh, DTMF uh, key presses, audio, and, and so forth, and the moment the IVR is getting back to us with some uh, prompt that we are trying to match. So this is the response time delay that we are computing. In that case, we, we have a 0 0.5 second response delay, which is pretty uh, small, but that delay could go well over seven, uh, seven seconds, 10 seconds, and so forth, and that might be an area where uh, you might have issues with some latencies with your backend and so forth. You also have access to uh, MOZ information. What is MOZ? Uh, MOZ is mean, stands for mean opinion score. That is um, the, the it, it relates to the actual voice quality from a user perspective. So what it does is actually chunk out the recording of each and every single call and send it over to our algorithm for uh, the computation of the MOS. We are using a standard ITU uh, algorithm for that, so it's, it's really standard information that is uh, available to you. Uh, once it computes your MOS, you get an average MOS per call distribution, as well as MOS over time uh, throughout, across all your, your calls. So we see that we have an average that is uh, starts rather low. Uh, sorry. Why it does start rather low? Because uh, our first prompt feature a uh, music in there. So music, by definition, it does not get good MOS quality. But as we go further toward the end of of uh, the call, we get much higher uh, MOS value. We can move on to the next tab where we get information about DID. So if you're into uh, DID migration, you have not only 10 DIDs, but you're migrating hundreds of those. Uh, it might be worthwhile to have a uh, presentation uh, view of whether those DID were actually uh, properly handled in terms of connect and, and so forth. So this is the, the kind of information that, that shows up into uh, that very uh, screen. So you have the details of all the DIDs. In that case, we had only one DID, but uh, otherwise, if you had uh, 800 DIDs, for instance, uh, you will have all the details for each and every single DID, whether it did, it was reachable or not. Did it get a setup failure or not, and, and so forth. So that, that might be a good reporting tool onto migrating your DID from one carrier to another carrier. And in that age of migrating over uh, VOIP, it's always nice to see that. And then last tab we have is uh, the actual calls. So you can, uh, you can have all the needy details about each and every single call that we perform uh, throughout the test. So in that case, we did uh, 10 calls. Uh, we are showing 10 of those calls. We can look up for a particular call, for instance, with that single call ID. Uh, and you have an high level information about that very call, including the DID that was involved, uh, the last date from the scenario that was involved, start time, setup duration, call duration, and so forth. We can dig into that, that very call. Once we go into the, that call, we have 
Uh, again, information about that call, the ID involved, the uh, summary on timing information, the actual scenario that was involved, again, a link. I can click on that link and see, okay, this is the scenario that was involved for that very call. And on the right-hand side, we have the actual history for that call. So that is, what are the states that were uh, dealt with while interacting with your IVR, uh, response coming out of your IVR, and answer that we provide uh, to your IVR. So we match uh, welcome prompt, ask pi digit uh, prompt, and then we, we send over uh, DTMF one, two, three, four, five pounds. Uh, we got a response day of 0 0.5 seconds, and then uh, uh, the IVR response with thanks, and we got a teardown, that is a calling up. And we can listen to those calls, I can play back that prompt, and I can move into a specific area of that prompt, I can, uh, sorry, that recording, I can export that very recording, so you can share with your, your colleague, for instance, if you want to report a bug internally, uh, to some of your dev team and, and so forth. You can export that information and, and so forth. Uh, that covers uh, the results. And now on to back onto uh, our last bit, which feature uh, the monitoring side. So what we have is uh, within the project, uh, we now have a new item that gives you the ability to create monitoring schedule. So let's go in there. Uh, what is a monitoring schedule? It's basically a frequency at which we'll be generating call over and over and over again. Uh, you provided a name, uh, the name, the DID number that you're interested in, in uh, using for that very uh, test schedule, and then you can reuse one of either of your scenarios that you have previously defined. So in that case, we have a simple welcome from. So let's go back in there, open up that scenario, simple welcome. We see that we are simply matching, uh, this is actually calling our the new echo front line, the auto attendant that we have, and we are trying to match with the uh, auto attendant new echo welcome from. We just wait for five seconds and then we hang up. That's it, that's our monitoring scenario. So we go back into the schedule and then whenever we are ready, we can actually uh, enable that uh, schedule, save, and that will actually launch the uh, call right away. And whenever you have uh, failures, that will send uh, an alarm to your organization email so they can react upon it, uh, check out, and as part of the uh, monitoring alarm email, you will get a link to the actual test result or call result for that very specific call in failure. So you get, you can get, uh, dig down into uh, what was uh, the actual error in there. So that covers pretty much what we have in terms of uh, our web interface. Um, Thank you so much, Pascal. Um, that was a great demo. Um, I see that there haven't been um, any specific questions, so I'd just like to thank everyone for being um, with us this morning. We will be touching base with everyone in the next few days. Um, everyone who did register for the event um, should have received access actually to the new bot platform and their accounts have been um, credited with 200 free minutes. This way you can go in yourself and uh, try the platform out uh, risk-free. Um, also if there are any um, questions or additional information with regards to our agent simulator uh, and or the monitoring, um, for sure, we can touch base at that point on, on some of those follow-ups and provide you with all the information you would need. Thank you so much, everyone, for being online. Um, we hope to work with you soon. Thank you.